Josh Barlow has been described as a leader of Aotearoa's food scene. He's the new head chef at the Grove restaurant, which is one of the top in New Zealand. He's travelled the world, worked in prestigious Michelin-starred restaurants and helped create pop-up restaurants in Stockholm and Singapore. And I'm happy he's found time to pop up in my humble kota. Kia ora Josh, no mai, hara mai, welcome to the humble kota that I speak of. I hope it's up to standard because you're usually right in these very flash places. No, of course, thanks for having me and it's a, it's a perfect kitchen to cook this style of food in. Ka rawe tēnā, hea hā tēnē momokai. So what sort of food is this? Because I can smell it before I can see it. So we're going to make a taramasalada, which is a smoked fish roe dip. We're going to spread this onto a beautiful piece of rye bread and that's it. It's super simple, but it's full of flavour and tasty. After that, we're going to cook a short rib in bourbon and coke, which is something a lot of people probably haven't seen before. And we're going to serve this just with some raw pickled vegetables, and it's going to be delicious. Katahina te tsimatanga ko tēna, that is an amazing start. Nā ka aro ki te tsuetahi, or what are we going to do first? So the first thing we need to do is get our short rib salting. So what this does is this firms up the meat a lot. It's going to season it right through all the way to the bone and it's going to draw out a lot of moisture from the meat. We just have to leave it like that and we're going to leave it in the fridge for a couple hours. Kaio te nama hea, I'll do that hard gig putting this in here. Right. <laughs> so now we're going to focus on making the taramasalada. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to take our fish row. I'm going to give this to you. So Kia ora. You find out how ha, to do it. Ha, poo te I don't know if I want to ask. What exactly is the fish row? So it's the egg sack. Oh yeah, I thought so. All we have to do is cut it open mm -hmm. and that's going to show us all the little tiny fish eggs which are in there. At the moment it looks like sort of smoked ham. It does, yeah. Yeah. It, go it goes through the same process. It gets um, cured mm -hmm. and then it gets cold smoked in a smoker. Ka hokuna pine, so this is how you buy it. Exactly. We just need to scrape out all the eggs into our mixing bowl. He mama tonu te kimi, and so is it easy to find this? It sure is. Um, the best place I've found recently to buy it is online. It's cheap, it's affordable, and I mean, if you don't have access to buying stuff online, you can go down to probably a good a specialty food store. So one of the stages we need to get on is our brown butter. So what we need to do, we need to melt this, and we need to keep melting it until it goes a really nut brown color. It's gonna get a really interesting flavor. It's gonna go nutty and sweet, um, and we're gonna use that to brush our bread with, rather than just plain butter. So that's the stage where you need to start slowing it down a little bit, pull it off, and then just at the end, a little bit of lemon juice just to, just to cut through the richness of the fat. So you can just see that that's gonna go really well with our smoked fish mm. and some, some nice fresh bread. So the next thing we're gonna make is this. Mm -hmm. We need to get a couple of egg yolks ready. So we need to separate some eggs. We need a few bowls. Okay, so how many are we doing? So for this, we're probably going to drop four egg yolks into it. So we'll just start with a medium speed. We'll get all of that mixed up first. And then you just want to slowly whisk in your oil. How the mama? What type is that? So this is a grapeseed oil. But you can use any kind of neutral oil that doesn't have a strong flavour. Alright, so I think we have to have a taste now. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Oh wow, mm. it's fishy mayonnaise but it's not really fishy. It's not super fishy, you get a really nice smoky flavour from the fish and you can kind of see how it's going to go well with the, yeah. the brown butter and the rye bread. Okay, kua tai te wa, so when that's all ready and we're just going to freak our friends out and make it look so cool, how do we do that? To serve this we're going to slice and toast our bread, we're going to brush that really generously with our brown butter, we're going to spread this onto the toast, put it on the plate we're going to garnish it with a little bit of leaves, and that's it, it's ready to serve. Mmm. Mmm, wow. Mm. It's not bad, eh? How te parawa nei hara te parawa noa? That's not just any old bread, is it? No, so this is a rye bread which I've made myself. Um, I've made it with rye flour, molasses, and a dark beer. Um, so it's a really, really earthy and rich, rich bread. You know, it wasn't actually that hard to make. But it's no. this beautiful combination of flavours and hey, our haul, this is like completely changed my mind. I was going, smoke row, are you really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad I've changed your mind. Mm. But it's the it's the little things which will make the end product taste amazing. And so now I know how you roll. Hey Mahinuike te is there 
a lot that we have to do for this next dish or what do we need to get on to? So it's our beef short ribs, which we're going to cook in bourbon and coke. We've got a whole lot of vegetables here, which we're going to put through a pickle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then you Is this a carrot? It's a purple carrot. Right, and it's the same taste? Very similar taste, yeah. Like a hanumitia nga thai, so we want lots of different flavours. This is looking more like a beetroot, isn't it? So the thing we need to do now is to get our beef ready. Mm -hmm. It's been salting in the fridge for the last couple hours. So I'm going to grab it out the fridge. Kapai. And we need to wash it off. So it's done everything it needs to do, done its job? Exactly. So by the time you pull it out of the fridge, the salt's gone. It's pulled a lot of moisture out of the beef. And you can already feel that it's a lot firmer. It doesn't actually feel... Oh, OK. Fine. That's ready to cook now. So nothing in at this stage. Nothing oh, that's a good fit, isn't it? Look at that. Like a glove. This is from your uncle Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> so when we say bourbon, because we're cooking it off, it's not actually going to be alcoholic, is it? Like for tamariki? Not at all. So it's going to be cooking for three to four hours like this. At the end of it, it's all cooked off, it's all burnt off, and it's purely there for the flavour. Turn it on. So we're going to add a little bit of water to it, just enough to cover it, so that it's all getting cooked. You can use stock in this case, you can use water, but essentially what we're putting in is going to evaporate and disappear. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring this up to the boil, and then we're just going to turn it down and just let it simmer. And it's just cooking really slowly and gently. The slower you cook it, the better the end product's going to be. It's going to be moist and tender. For our raw salad, we're going to make a little bit of a pickle to go with it. So in here we've got 250 mils of the red wine vinegar and just 200 grams of sugar. So we're just going to dissolve that down. Once the sugar is all gone, then we're just going to pop it into a bowl in the fridge. And then once this is chilling in the fridge, we're going to add some cold water to it. Okay. So we'll add 250 mils of cold water. We're ready to shave all our vegetables. These things here, these are awesome. It's called a Japanese mandolin. If people don't have one in their house, they need one. What are you Is it enough? That looks like it's going to be plenty. It's perfect. Okay, what are you doing? All right, so just a couple of shallots. We're going to put these in as well. I'm just going to cut these by hand with a knife. Hey, I had right. the mandolin. Don't even need that. Look at you go. Look at that. We're ready to go. You can see straight away, you don't need a lot of liquid in there. Mm. Nice sea salt again. Good season on that. Super easy, right? Cool, couple. So we're going to put that in the fridge for later. So our beef's cooked. I've just taken a little bit of liquid out of this pot. I've put it in here just to reduce it down. Oh, OK. As it reduces down, it starts to get really thick and caramelly and sweet. Gravy-ish. Exactly. So we can see now that the glaze is ready. It's reduced and it's changed a lot from what it was when it was in the pot cooking the beef. Mm. So it's come down, it's more concentrated. All right, so we can turn that off, that's ready to go. Mm -hmm. And now we just need to portion these ribs. So we're just gonna split them down the, down the center of the bone. So straight down there. Mm. So. Wow, looks look good too, it's so good then. Perfectly cooked. Exactly. So we're gonna pop that back in this pan. Just gonna pour this glaze all over it. Whoa. So we're just gonna let that sit in the glaze for a minute. And then we're gonna grill it off on the little grill here on the ah. stove top. Just to give it a little char from the gas. So we've got everything done. How are you going to serve up this amazing dish? To plate up, we're gonna serve one rib bone each, which is, you see the size of them, they're massive. And just a good pile of the raw salad. Just so every time you're getting a mouthful of meat, you can get a bit of that raw pickle. Wow. <laughs> hey, mau wai mari e, kai konei ngā tāwhakāhua. I'm glad we have cameras on this, because this is Instagram worthy. That just looks so beautiful. Me whakamata ka tika, so oh my goodness, where to start? So you say we've got to have something of everything going on there, right? Yep, we want some of the pickle on there, we want some of the cucumber. Mm. Mmm, mm, mm, wow. Mm. It's good. There's a lot of balance there. It's, it's delicious. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. It's been, uh, it's been awesome fun. Yeah, so it's cool. Great. Thank you. Wow, this is going to become a Sunday favourite.